So help us to see inside the life of what are the challenges, first of all, within the foster system, and then as those kids begin to age, what are the challenges that they face uh, with having to do life on their own? Well, to be quite honest, for the system is that we also have to address the, the pipeline. Children coming mm -hmm. into foster care, strengthening marriages, encouraging marriage, and also wow. raising children in a God honoring way and mm -hmm. committing to marriage for the long term. Those are the reasons why these kids go uh, into foster care dysfunction, uh, single parents, yeah. uh, kids get molested because they got a babysitter or it's too much mm -hmm. time at the coach's office, what have you, this, these kind of things. And so, uh, that's part of it. But also the foster care system in particular was so wonderful in LA County. They're embracing the faith community now. I love o it. Overtly, they're asking for us. Unfortunately, I'm one, I'm one of the few pastors that's connecting at a deep level. Uh, be quite honest, I'm no longer pastor. My oldest son, Joshua Smith, is now doing that. And that allows me to be, be full time doing this. I couldn't do this level of involvement and be a pastor at the same time, not right. the size of a church mm -hmm. that we had. That's really a different form of pastoring. I mean, I just see how God used you in that season uh, of shepherding and then your recent transition, handing that over to your son who is well equipped. And now God's going to uh, he's absolutely exploding uh, and, and enlarging that gift and that ministry of shepherding. It's really like fathering in a sense. And uh, I can't think of a better field or mission field for all of us to be praying over, to be supporting, and to be paying attention to people like you who are really the boots on the ground. Um, what, what would you like to see in terms of growth? What is the need right now for your program? The biggest need is housing, uh, having available housing to house these young people. Our first house in Whittier, California, uh, is a house for a single woman with no children. But the biggest mm -hmm. need is women with children. We started off with yeah. no children because as our first house, we didn't want to complicate it with kids and, you know, and how to work with them. And the lady says, you got it. Your kid is bothering my kid. We don't want to be able to have that kind of problem and not understand how to do that well. So, but we want to address that because you have women with children and what happens when they're out of foster care, they're on the street or house surfing and so forth. Their children are now vulnerable becoming into foster care. So mm -hmm. that's a big need. And also what we did is to scale it, we've been placing people in other people's homes for years. And now we're expanding that because there's not enough housing and affordable housing in LA. So to solve that problem, we're talking to people in our churches, our church and others and individuals in our community. I have a room, I'm a, I'm a widow, widower, I'm empty nester. I got two or three bedrooms. I can mm -hmm. use the company. Wow. Wow. And that works really, really well. So we work with them. We coordinate that process. We help these young people get into education programs, uh, jobs, mm -hmm. and so they can live on their own ultimately. Okay, that leads to my next question, uh, because naturally I'm thinking housing is one thing, and that's so critical and important. But what are you able to do to equip them? And uh, it, it, does that cross over into the spiritual aspects, the psychological aspects of, of equipping and building their confidence, as well as education? Tell us a little bit about that and, and your program. Thank you. Uh, Nehemiah is holistic. It drew, do, deals with a whole person their life and their spiritual life. Uh, we're not heavy handed on spiritual life because these young people are very traumatized and they'll just back off and run yeah. off in the street. So we just love them. We love them and we encourage them. And then we begin to bring in biblical principles uh, through a devotion. We pray for them. And many of them ask us to go to church and we'll go to another church. So it's powerful how they're seeing the light. Uh, and But it's technology training, basic skills training. They may start off at a kind of a minimum wage kind of job at first, because some of them haven't had much education, unfortunately. Sometimes they leave foster care and haven't even got their, their high school diploma or GED, which is unfortunate. Oh, wow. So that's why they struggle. So we get to do with the basics, but uh, with the love of God and a broad community. We call ourselves a forever family. Even when they age out, out of our program and they're on their own, we still work with them. Sometimes you get called, like I get calls from my kids sometimes, Dad, I need some money, I need some help. My daughter yesterday <laughs> called me about her car, you know, and I, and, was, and I need, uh, you know, she was going to ride on and save a little money um, because she gets paid next week, right? And not have a note, I'll get it 
fix. I'll get a new, new tire. Let's do it now. I just pay for it. Yeah. But see, when you don't have a family, you're on right. your own. Mm. Wow. I love that, Bishop, and the, the fact that you consider it a family, a forever family, because that is exactly what they need. And I mean, we all need family. We all need community. And uh, we have so forgotten those who have been underprivileged uh, victims of, of circumstances that were beyond them. When trauma and victimization comes in, in the life of a child, I can think of nothing worse and these are the ones that we need to be uh, seeing and paying attention to and praying for, because I believe that it is because of their great value and their great worth that the enemy targets these young mm -hmm. lives to wipe them out, to take them on a different journey, but God, yeah. but God. And here's the thing, 